Good evening and welcome to uh, the special meeting of the City Council for the City of Pleasant Hill on July 10, 2023. For those who are able, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, good evening. May we have the roll call? Nowak? Rin? Here. Chess? Here. Vincent? Here. Flaherty? Here. Uh, since this is a special meeting, um, I do want to remind those who are not in the chambers, and for those of you who are here, thank you for being here in person. But you can also join us uh, virtually by Zoom, www.zoom.us. The information is now being broadcast on the screen. The meeting ID is 814-1762-6721, the passcode 215-998. You can also call us on the telephone by dialing area code 669-900-6833. We're going to dispense with uh, general announcements and, and council member announcements unless somebody's clamoring for the opportunity to announce something and move to public comment. Uh, so we'll, uh, this is the time the public is welcome at this time to address the city council on items not listed on the agenda, but within the council's jurisdiction. We have one item on our agenda later on, and you will have an opportunity to comment on that when we call that item. Uh, comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. I just gave the uh, instructions for virtual connectivity. Is there anyone in the chambers that wishes to offer public comment? Seeing none, we'll turn to our virtual connection. Anybody on Zoom? There are no hands raised. All right, then we'll close public comment. And we'll move to the action calendar item 5.1, the introduction of an ordinance of the city council uh, to go establishing by district elections, defining district boundaries, and scheduling elections within the districts. Our city attorney, Janet Colson, and her colleague, Jim Priest, may be here to offer a report. Thank you. Yes. Is Jim on the. Um... He was. Same okay. Now. There he is. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we are at the point now. Um, you have an ordinance in front of you. That will be the introduction, the first reading for the um, going to district elections pursuant to map five. And that is attached to the back of the ordinance. I do want to point out, I think um, we didn't change the numbering on this. I believe at, at one of the last meetings on map five, you wanted the numbering on three and four switched, I believe. We can definitely do that if that's something that you, you want to do um, because they're just the way we have named the districts. We've numbered the districts. Um, uh, so uh, we are at that point for introduction. If this ordinance is introduced first reading tonight, it will be second reading adoption next Monday night at a regularly scheduled meeting. This is a special meeting. And you will notice that there is something new that I have added to um, the top of the map. And it's also in the ordinance. It's the sequencing of elections. And I don't know that we've really talked too much about this, um, but uh, we are proposing that the um, you keep the three and two split that you have for elections. So we have two seats that were up in 2022. They would be up again in 2026. It just works out that way. But um, we have three seats up in 2024. And as it um, is proposed, one, three, and four would be the districts that would be up for election in 2024. Two and five would be the ones up in 2026. And um, you will note that the two council members who have were elected in the fall of 2022, council member Nowak and council member Schess, uh, live in two and five. It just worked out that way, but it doesn't have, the sequencing doesn't have to be like that. It can be anything the council wants. And so that's up to you. We have made that assumption and put that in here, but if that's not your pleasure, please let us know and that can change. I think there needs to be some explanation about what that would do. It's a little complicated. So please bear with me. Um, 
let's say, for example, I think the best way to understand this may be to use examples. District 5 right now has four of the sitting council members living in District 5. Uh, council Member Shess, you happen to live there, but you have an at-large seat that does not end until 2026. If you were to select District 5 for election in 2024, it would be the District 5 seat. It would not be the at-large seat that you currently hold. And so anybody could run who lives in District 5 could run for that seat in 2024, including you. You could, you could run for that. If you did not win, you would still fill out your position on council until 2026. That cannot be taken away from you. That is yours. But if you did win that seat, if five were up and you won, you would presumably, because you ran for it, take the four-year 2024 to 2028 district seat. You would resign your at-large seat with two years left on it, and the council would have to appoint someone at large to fill that at large seat. So that's one scenario. Does that make sense? And I'm I'm sorry. I just think it's important that you understand this. Do you, are there any questions about that? If, if I understand you correctly, there are no council members that have been elected by district. Correct. The council members that um, will be here in November of 2024 will be at large council members. Correct. And so, uh, well, Councilmember Shess uh, lives in District Five. He's not been elected by District Five. So, if I understand you, you could have a District Five or even a District Two, for that matter, election next cycle, and the people that live in that district but still have an unfilled term will remain to fill their term, or as you suggest, they could run for the district in that election as well, resign their general seat the then constituted council would appoint at large, we use at large, it could just be anybody from anywhere in the boundaries of the city. Right. right. I understood that. Okay. <laughs> and Jim will correct me if I'm, if I misstate nope. on any of this. Nope, you are correct on this. Um, and that's just, uh, you know, we're, we're, that's part of the issue of the sequencing when you have a number of council members on different tracks in the same district. This, this necessarily happens to some elected officials uh, uh, with the sequencing here. But yeah, as you said, uh, the at-large seat would continue to serve till 2026, but if elected to a district five seat in 2024, that seat could be resigned. That would create a vacancy, which could be filled by the council through appointment. That appointment would be good until 2026. Uh, alternatively, the council could elect to put that on a special election sometime in 2025 and, and go with that. But again, that would be a council discretionary option there. And the, the important point to note, I think, about that is that that remaining two-year term is an at-large um, position. And so anybody anywhere in the city could be selected to fill that by appointment. It doesn't have to be somebody from District 5 because it's still an at-large seat. And to cover those bases, we have made that explicit in the ordinance. So that is clear in there that any vacancy of an at-large seat is filled at large. And then once the seat transitions over to a district seat, either in 2024 or 2026, depending on the particular seat, then further vacancy appointments or special elections would be filled by the voters of that specific district. But that's only after they've naturally cycled to a regular election. Okay, so can I just follow up on that? Because there was some questions on Facebook about this, and I think the answers may have been incorrect. So somebody had asked about item four on here where a city council member resigned or you know left the state or something else and what happened to their seat so zach and i being let's just say going through to 2026 
if we were to resign in December 2024, our seat would be filled as an at-large seat, not as a district seat. Correct. Okay. I just, that, that information that was online was incorrect. And I just want to make sure that's clarified for the okay. public record. Thanks. Sure. But if I'm reading the staff report, you're not recommending that we've sort of, in our discussions up to this point, treated the districts um, in which Councilman Renoak and Chess live as sort of their districts by default. Um, that is the easiest way to look at it, but it's definitely not something cast in stone. That's a council decision. So I wanted to make sure council understood you have that ability to do that. Yeah. I don't, well, we've never discussed it before, so I don't know what anybody's awareness was, but I didn't have that awareness. No. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, could I just add one additional comment? Um, as Ms. Colson indicated, um, that this will be the council's direction which way the sequencing is established. One thing I would want to point out is particularly District 1. District 1, as the council recall, has the largest coalition minority citizen voting age population, CVAP, one of those acronyms we've been learning over the last few months on this. Uh, because District 1 has the highest coalition minority voter population, uh, it's consistent with the CVRA that that elect, that district elect as soon as possible. So that is why our recommendation is that District 1 go in 2024. The other districts, uh, there's no presumption or favoring one way or the other in the law. That would be the council's policy. Thank you. Is there anything further from you, Ms. Colson? No, I'm happy to take any questions. Anybody have any questions that they haven't already asked? <laughs> Anybody? I, 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 I do. Uh, Councilman Rochette. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, okay, so I, I came in here. I wanted to find out about number number four. Uh, number four on the, under uh, Article 4, 2.55.160. Uh, I, this seemed, I just wanted to get clarification on this. And, 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 and Councilmember Noack seemed to kind of touch on it, but I just want to make sure that, because it says in here that it's at, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, it, it's something about notwithstanding any provision in the section, the council member in office at the time takes effect shall continue in office until the expiry. Okay, sure. in the event a vacancy occurs before the expiration of the term of the council in office at the time this section takes effect, a person uh, who is appointed or elected by special election to fill the vacancy may reside anywhere within the corporate boundaries of the city. To me, that doesn't say anything about districts or at large, right? So is that, I mean, is that going to, is this going to apply to, if we, if everything's done with district elections, it's approved, we're, we're done. The way this is, to me, I, I interpret this was like, it, under district elections, this could be, you could still get, if someone, if someone has to resign, they would, they would be appointed as an at-large. That's how I interpret it. Is that not correct? We have a transition period. Okay. And so, yes, you're going to district elections. Your first district election will be November of 2024. Mm -hmm. But we have two seats that were your, the one you're sitting in now and the one that Council Member Nowak is in. Uh, those were at large seats, right. they're not by district. I get that. Let me stop you because I think yeah. I know you're you're gonna you're gonna probably tell us what you just said, and that's great. But <laughs> what I'm saying, let's let's go out eight years. Let's just say everything's we have district elections. We're we're well into this process. Right. Is number four where it says here, a person who is appointed or elected to, by special election to fill such vacancy may reside anywhere within the corporate boundaries of the city. Does that mean that? Maybe That's I can put my commentary okay. on that. Uh, subsection A4 is the great transitional exception rule, basically. Notwithstanding okay. any other provision, this thing commits the city to by district elections. Three districts will naturally transition over in November of 2024. The other two will naturally transition in November 2026. But as we discussed earlier, those 2026 seats can remain at large and the, you and Council Member Nowak are entitled to serve the entirety of those terms. You were elected to those. 
But if there happens to be a vacancy in that office, council members in office at the time, we're filling a vacancy for council member seats in office at the time. So this is just a transitional rule. Eight years from now, this is going to be history. Uh, this is just, again, to honor the legal requirement that those 2026 at-large seats get to continue until the, nat the natural end of their elected term. Then they'll transition over to by district. So this is not going to have any effect after 2026. Okay, thank you, Jim. And, and, and by the way, that's just very technical language in the ordinance for you can appoint or elect somebody at large is that they may reside anywhere within the corporate boundaries of the city. Well, that's at large in a technical definition sense. Any other questions? Keep going. So if there was a proposed change to this order, uh, where does that where does that put us with just theoretically, where does that put us with our our seven day reading, our our Shankman? Where does that where does that put we us? can uh, we could make changes to the sequencing tonight. You could still introduce tonight as modified, as amended. As, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna okay, it'd be fine. Thank you. That's kind of a rookie question, but thank you for indulging me. <laughs> no more questions for me, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Wren, do you have some questions? I know this. Um, just following up on Council Member Chess's comment about the uh, A4, uh, not to over lawyer this, uh, but um, it's potentially ambiguous where it says in the event a vacancy occurs before the expiration of the term of a council member in office at the time this section takes effect, shouldn't we identify that it's the term that they hold at the time the ordinance takes effect as opposed to somebody coming down the road and said, I've been reelected or I'm here, but my term has expired and the council at that time says we get an at-large appointment. Does that make sense? Because I'm a, because I'm a council member. Right. So if I ran again in 2026 and resigned in 2027, exactly. you're saying because I was a council member still at the time this took effect, that makes it a little ambiguous. Right. So I would suggest but, that we just say that before the expiration of the term, the council member holds at the time the ordinance is adopted. Well, let's something to that effect. I mean, I, 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 I read it the way you describe it, but uh, after listening to council member Shess, I, I could see a potential ambiguity and don't want to, Shall continue in office until the expiration of the term to which he or she was elected in the event a vacancy occurs before the expiration of the term of a council member in office at the time this section takes so it's like effect. Two things. You have a term, doesn't say which term, but it does identify a council member in, in, in office now. And I right. think those are disjointed or potentially disjointed. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Could it, couldn't it simply say that after 2026, there will be no more at large? Let's hear from our okay. expert from consultants, right. but it's a good, good solution. Got too uh, many lawyers you. in here. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Go ahead. Might I suggest some alternate wording of that sentence? In the event a vacancy occurs before the expiration of the term of a council member, the, the term a council member currently holds at the time the section takes effect. That would be clear language of limitation. It's the term they currently hold. It's the expiration of that. It's not some future term they may be elected to two, four years from now. I'm fine with that. Read that to me again. Let me write, make sure I get that. In the event, a vacancy occurs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just saying I liked Alan's version where it just says after 2026, it's done. It's a lot clearer <laughs> that we just say after the 2026 election, this no longer, the section four no longer applies. I think that makes it even oh, easier. We, we, could, we could do it either way. So that's a non-lawyer speaking. <laughs> it's a non-lawyer speaking. <laughs> do we have a preference? Do we want to do it? We want to say um, prior to 2026, in the event a vacancy occurs, is that what you're talking about? Is that what you said? Something like that, yes. Prior to the 2026 
November election. November election. Yeah. So it's clear that after 2026, there are no more at large seats. Seats. Prior to November 2026, in the event a vacancy occurs before the expiration of the term of a council member in office at the time this section takes effect, person who is appointed or elected by special election to fill such vacancy may reside anywhere within the corporate boundaries of the city. Does that seem okay? It does. Um, we might want to take a break and print that out and pass it out for everyone to look at rather than just take the, the verbal reading of it. We can take the verbal reading technically, um, or if you wish to take a break and print it out, we can do so. But um, I'd like to see it in print. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I will, I'm I can just do one that. person. What do the rest of the council think? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll be, um, how long do we have here? 10 minutes. How long do you need? I am going to do it as fast as I can. <laughs> Is there anything else we want to talk about, about the ordinance? Any questions, it's content before we take a break? To why don't we go through the whole thing and then Janet can make right. the changes why don't we, do we take a look at it that, so we'll at do, that time. That's good. We'll, we'll do public okay. comment okay. too. there's any other changes that come as a result of public comment. So those are all the questions of council. We'll open public comment on this item now. Uh, do we have anybody here in chambers who would like to make public comment on this item? Seeing that, I'll turn to our city clerk. Any virtual attendees? There are no hands raised. Wow. Oh. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll close public comment at this time, and we'll take a 15-minute break uh, to allow the city attorney to provide a revised copy of the ordinance. So we'll reconvene at 7.37. Thank you.
things about me. Okay. What is Jesus talking about? Well, he lives us.
Uh, welcome back. Uh, reconvening the city special city council meeting. Uh, the city attorney has handed out on the break um, a red line version of uh, section A4 of the proposed uh, ordinance for the by district elections. Uh, the new sentence reads 
until the November 3, 2026 general municipal election in the event a vacancy in an at-large office occurs before the expiration of the council member's term, a person who was appointed or elected by special election to fill such vacancy may reside anywhere within the corporate boundaries of the city. So, I'm fine with that. Yep. All right, with that amendment, uh, do I need to reopen public? No, we have, I think public comment has already occurred. We indicated that was the change we were gonna make. There is anyone on Zoom that has their hand raised? Just make sure. There are no hands raised. Okay. Uh, any other comments or? Promotion uh, or what? Just in general, um, I appreciate the city attorney taking uh, the time to kind of explain a little bit further, um, you know, about the differential between the two at large uh, continuing members um, with the proposed uh, sequencing. I agree that we should still include the district one as one of the options there uh, because that's kind of the reason why we're here. Um, but I would be open to other suggestions for the sequencing. And I would ask also that we look at District 5 as one of the options for the sequencing for the 2024 elections. And then removing. Uh, or is that what you're I would, I would, I could go one, four, five, but I'm open to one, three, five. Um, any variation of those, but. I definitely go with one and then have five as an option. And then depending on the preference of the council, uh, either three or four at that point. Um, but I would, my proposal would be one, four or five. For discussion, because now yeah. we are, we're actually having this discussion. We've kind of gone through the process and. All right, now I'd like to hear some of the, the rationale for that though. Um, I mean, I could think of some, but I'm just curious what yours are. Yeah, I, I think that we're in a situation that, you know, like where a lot of us reside within District 5, um, and a lot of us are up um, in 2024. And in theory, if we um, went with only the new district did, then, you know, obviously anyone can run District 5 at any time who's eligible, but then the three of us would have to sit out for at least two years. Um, without a, a position um, and having it on the 2024 ballot would um, have that option where we would have um, an ability to continue to serve as a council member in that capacity. Um, also at that time, since uh, council member Shess and council member NOAC, uh, it, their terms are for four years, so they would still be able to continue on with their terms. Uh, and so they would be able to satisfy their full four-year terms uh, with that being affected. It does give uh, council member Shess an option to run for uh, election for a district in 2024, which would, you know, if he does prevail in that case, uh, he would get a four full years as a district member. So additional two years from the two he's already served um, at that point. Um, I, I don't want to say he doesn't have anything to lose, but if he didn't prevail in that situation, he would still be able to complete uh, his at-large term for the full four years in that scenario. But if he does prevail, then it would be his option um, to be the district representative and or resign the at-large position. With that so it's still somebody's got to kind of sit out in those scenarios, whether it's the three of us who are terming out in 2024. Um, or in 2026, uh, once council member Chess is at large position, then he would have the option if he wanted to, to run in 2028 for that district seat as well. So that's some of the um, ideas about that and open to discussion since we haven't really talked about the sequencing. Well, if, if I just follow your example, if, if and not pick on on council member chef but uh, yeah and there's nothing no no none intended it's just running through hypothetical scenarios but of what we've been told council member chef just chose to remain in his in his general elected office that runs through 2026 or, or strike that <laughs> uh if he did run for the district seat and prevail 
he would have to resign his general election seat because he can't hold two seats at the same time. And so then whoever's on the council uh, at the end of 2024 would have the same decision we had at the end of last year, how to fill a vacant seat by appointment or special election. Uh, and that just seems a little onerous uh, to have to do that again so quickly. Uh, I mean, I can see somebody making an argument that by running an election in a district where a council member term does not expire, maybe gives the opportunity for an incumbent to run again, and you have more seasoned people on the council. Uh, but I, I, I just don't think that's a good look. Uh, that it seems like it's, it's done to preserve incumbency. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I do appreciate all the new information and, and I think it's an interesting question and I'll defer to the rest of the council on how they want to handle this. Uh, but it just seems to me that in my mind, I've always treated the proposed district five and district two as being inherited by our current elected officials that live in that district whose term doesn't expire. And uh, that we've been recalled by districting. So the rest I of agree. Us. I agree at that point. If I may uh, counter, you made the statement about uh, preservation of incumbency. Yeah. Um, it, but I also think it, uh, preserves continuity potentially of the council. Um, um, it'd be a situation. I mean, obviously you don't know which way would go uh, in district five elections, but potentially if you go with three brand new districts, that would bring in three brand new council members to the, to the dais, um, which, you know, change is good. It's going to happen inevitably because, you know, if we do go with the five, one, four, one, there still will be two new council members you know, that come into the dais. So it's, it's more of a, uh, a continuity of having potentially if, if a company does win in five, um, you know, then that would well, be that scenario. So the same could be true of district two. If we decided we wanted to, well, the, I don't know. I'd like to hear from the other council members. Sure. Well, district two is a little different only in that continuity doesn't come into play. Right. I mean, if, if you put district two up in 2024, there's no other I either, there's there's no other incumbents in district two. So I'd either prevail and go four more years, I'd lose, and you'd have four new council members <laughs> in here instead of three, potentially. So uh it, it, it there it's just it's a little different than yeah. than the than the other scenario. So um well the proposal of putting district five in the sequence assumes that an incumbent is gonna run an incumbent who's, who's districted out or termed out right. going to run right. and win. Yes. Well, has, a, has the opportunity. But I, I understand I understand the desire for it. I mean, I, you know, through this whole process, my, you know, I, I, I certainly support the, the concept of bringing more minority in and, 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 uh, the whole basis behind the California Voters' Right Act. However, for me, it's also very sad because I lose three fellow council members, two of you who I've served with for quite a period of time and have done a lot of excellent work. And, and really, you will sit out at a minimum for two years. Uh, so it's, you know, for me, that's kind of bittersweet. You guys have worked hard. You've been elected, you know, You've elected in a general election, not just in a district, uh, which everybody keeps pointing out how much easier it will be in a district versus a citywide. And so for that, I'm, uh, you know, I kind of understand because it's bittersweet for, for you guys who have run for election a couple of times, worked hard, uh, have excellent reputation and deserve that reputation to all of a sudden have a district sort of force you out, as you say, sort of a district recall. That's that's unfair. However, I, I do think it makes it complicated. I, I you know, it's um, because you do have, you know, if, if you if you have quotes oh, corner, because I keep forgetting what number it is. Five. Five. If five goes in, if five goes in, you have, you know, if Zach prevails then 
he goes into four and then we got to appoint somebody. If he doesn't, he stays in two seats. Somebody else prevails, may be incumbent, may not be an incumbent. Um, it just gets caught. And then I mean, if Zach doesn't prevail in two years later, then he can't run because somebody's already in that district and that forces him out. It ends up, it's, it's very convoluted, I think, in that sense. And trying to be, trying to be fair makes it very complicated. So I, all I can say is, you know, I'm saddened that, that this is the result of a process that we need to go through, but it's the, the impact of it is, is sad. Anybody else have any comments? Yes, I do. Um, I reside in district number five and my term is up in 2024. I have no plans to run again. So that kind of narrows down some of the options that are available. All the way through uh, the discussion, I've kind of assumed we would do uh, the district sequencing as is in the map that was presented with the res uh, ordinance. Uh, one, three, and four would be 2024 and two and five would be in 2026. Um, I really appreciate council member Wren's thoughts on this because I know he's worked hard for the city and would like to continue doing that. But I agree, it gets a bit convoluted if we start to change around from what's proposed in the ordinance. Well, I think Councilmember Wren is worried about the brain drain, which mm -hmm. Councilmember Nowak uh, commented on as well. Um, so I think it's 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 a, a laudable goal. But I and I'm I'm falling on on the Vincent side of I'm not running for anything next year, at least in the city of Pleasant Hill. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> oh, the rumors start. Yeah, really start. Start the rumors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, um, I have a, a... Wait, one more. Wait, can I get that? <laughs> <laughs> you can play it back later. Yeah, but say it's taped. Oh, that's right. It's, it's right. Taped. It's taped. Yeah, it's taped. Never mind. <laughs> Again, rookie, rookie comment. So, and, and I just think it's too many elections. Right? It's just too many elections. A lot. Um, I am worried, but you know, we'll see how it plays out. I'm, I'm yeah. cautiously optimistic that there will be three new council members sitting here at the dais with council members Shasta and Noak. So actually, as I've said before, I would defer to the uh, with the opinion that either or both of you have as to how we should sequence the election, because you're going to bear the consequences of it. Uh, well, certainly when I got elected, uh, wasn't thinking we'd be having this conversation, uh, needless to say. Um, I, I started, to, I, as we were talking about this, I started to think about what would I say at the doorstep of somebody in two years? It, it's a little confusing. Like, what would I say? Oh, I'm here. Well, oh, wait, didn't you get elected for four? No, I'm not. Well, why? Um, I, I, I think it goes away from, you know, I'm here, I'm coming back to you to earn your vote based on my performance that I did for those four years. Uh, and that's, that's, that's kind of where I, where I start to kind of, you know, think about um, how, you know, to, to you guys use the word convoluted, I, I maybe use the word confusing or, but um, it's, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a pessimistic side of me that says that it is, it's a shame that we're going to lose people that we're going to lose. Um, the optimistic side to me says, well, if district elections is going to make it much easier, supposedly from a financial point of view, then we better damn have a lot of candidates because they're not going to have to run a citywide campaign. They're only going to have to run for their district. So they better, I'm hoping that they're going to be pressure tested through a campaign at least to get to that, to get to where they, you know, to get, to get elected. So that's, that's the optimistic side of me. Now, is that any of that going to, you know, that's just, I'm just kind of saying my, the pluses and minuses there. Um, but it, to, that's where, when I look at this and, and then I think about my role in this, because it seems to have kind of fallen um, on, on kind of on, on my, my, I call it my district. I, I just kind of, I have a, a difficult time telling a constituent what, why I'm in front of their doorstep in two years versus, or any member of the community versus the normal four. I do think there'll be plenty of confusion anyway, because there are a lot of people that are unaware of district elections. And when next year comes around and they're only voting for one candidate, no matter what, 
there will be a lot of explanations having to be said, no matter how much we have tried to communicate this over the last several months. Absolutely. That confusion will exist anyway uh, next November, and we will have to do quite a bit of explaining uh, when people only have the ability to vote for one person. So that's going to, you know, that's going to, it's going to have, it's going to be a little confusing anyway. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just want to clarify, I, you know, I, I don't mean to put council member Chess in position because I wholeheartedly believe that he's the right man for the job and, you know, winning this last election um, was the right choice for him to be on council. So I, by putting the, the the suggestion of having District Five up for election, in no way takes away from uh, my thoughts about Council Member Chess and his abilities to serve. It's just some of the logistics that we're caught in trying to do this districting mapping, and unfortunately, um, based on residency and where you live, that some of these things are going to come up. Um, and so, I just wanted to clear the record that. I, I think you're a good council member, Shess, and it's not anything personally directed to you, but it does put you in a tough position to decide what, what your your plan is. So, yeah. uh, it's it's an early, that's an early report card. <laughs> the jury's still out on that, but I, I just wanted to clarify that. I don't want my comments to think oh, absolutely. in any way, shape, or form you're derogatory you're, towards you or your skills as a council member. So, The Scantron is not filled out yet. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, so is, is, is there a consensus among all those comments about how to sequence? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like there's support I, I, <laughs> doing yeah, an alternate I, at this point. I, you know, I, again, I think all of us appreciate council member Wren's position and his concerns and his thoughts on this. I, I really do. And I, and I've said that time and time again, and, but I think this will be confusing enough process for the public anyway that I would like to keep it simpler and therefore have the districts that have none of us residing in be the election, be the districts that are up for election in November 24. And that council member Shess and I will have to decide what we're gonna do come 2026 about the districts that, that we happen to reside in. But um, again, I'm, I'm Councilman Bruchess said, I'm optimistic a lot of people run because it'll be easier financially to run and smaller area to cover. But, but I do want to comment, the job stays the same. The job is still a tough job and still requires a lot of hours and a lot of thought and input. And so it might be easier to run. It's not going to be easier to, to do the job. So um, I just want to make that point. But I think, I think we ought to stick with how the ordinance is laid out here for ease of process since i brought it up the contrary um discussion topic i will withdraw that and i would move forward with a um motion to approve uh one three and four as proposed within the ordinance um with the amended item four verbiage about an item four um as amended I will second that and thank you, Matt, for, for doing that. And that's second. for introduction of the ordinance. And then I need to ask, are we moving the numbering on three and four? Can I address that? Yeah, please. Um, at one of our public meetings, a member of the public suggested we renumber the districts. Right. And I made that suggestion and Mayor Flaherty followed up saying, why don't we do it clockwise? So I think one should stay as one. Three should become two, five should become three, two should become four, and then the center one, which is now four, would become five. Okay, let's make sure, let's make sure we get this right because it's going to fix, it's going to, we're going to have to change the ordinance on the sequencing then. Uh, I know because that affects the sequencing. Okay, one stays one. Three to two. Three becomes, three two. becomes two. Five becomes three. Three. Two becomes four, and four becomes five. Okay. We leave one is the only one unchanged. Number three has become two. Number four has become five. Number two has become four. 
number five has become three. That changes the sequencing then, and we are going to have in 2026, three and four. Three and four. Yeah. Right. Three and four, correct? And one, two, and five. And one, no, two, one, and five. Two, no, no, no. That's in 20. Yes, yes so. one, two, and five. One, one two, two, and five. five. Yeah. In 2024. 2024. Mm-hmm. Is everybody good with that? I, okay, I, then we need to look at the ordinance. And if I need to amend my motion, I will to include the new numbers. Sorry. If that works, do we need you're, to? You're, you're more, you, you've been here longer, you deserve it. Um, I'm fine with the renumbering uh, in the clockwise manner as described. I'm happy and to amend my motion to include and, that. And the sequencing being the 2024 elections are one, three, and five, excuse me, one, two, and five. Two and yeah. Five. And the 2026 elections are district three and four. That would be we could three and four. To that. No. Okay. Uh, that changes section B of the ordinance so that it reads in 2024 and every four years thereafter, the following three city council districts shall be elected by district, district one, district two, and district in 2026 and every four years thereafter, the following two city council districts shall be elected by district, district three and district four. And it changes the sequencing on the proposed map five. Correct. Up in the upper right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Yes. And we have a motion and a second, right? There's a motion by Vice Mayor Wren, a second by Councilmember Nowak. As amended. As amended. amended. May we have the roll call? Nowak? Yes. Wren? Yes. Chess? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. All right. So the orders will be brought back at our next scheduled meeting of July 17. And with that, there's no further business. We'll adjourn to our July 17, 2023 meeting. Thank you. Thank you all for your efforts tonight. Thank you for those who followed along in person or online.